Hi, thank you for joining us today. This is Dina at Remnant Nation Radio and NewWinePouring.com. Welcome to Remnant Nation Radio and NewWinePouring.com. Remnant Nation Radio is a prophetic and poetic view of the sojourning bride of Christ in the world today. Remnant Nation Radio and NewWinePouring.com. Well, if you haven't been able to tell already, I am in my car. My husband's driving, David, and we just came from a restaurant. We're thinking about the podcast that I do at on the Spreaker channel that is carried by iHeartRadio, by the way. And what we would like to say as a couple, what we would like to share with others. Now, Dave and I have been married for 35 years, and uh, of course it's, it's a feat for this day and age to be married that long, and it hasn't always been easy, but it's been easy in the Lord. Right. We want to talk about the importance of prayer, and just something as simple as beginning your day in prayer, so you start out. And I'm holding the microphone so, or for him to talk. Yeah, thanks for, other... sharing, thanks for sharing that with everybody. <laughs> yeah, everybody, she's holding the microphone so I can talk because I'm driving. Okay, picture image. I'm driving, she's holding the phone. <laughs> Anywho, well, yeah, I mean, it's important to pray, of course, always. But we forget sometimes in the busy rush of the hectic whatever of life. And uh, we don't pray and... Uh, well, our day probably not going to go as good as it could have if we did pray. And uh, you got to pray to break down the strongholds and any assignments to the enemy that might be out there to attack you that day. And simple things from uh, just, you know, traffic, safety, protection, having your angels around about you and your family and your loved ones, protecting them. And just pray for, you know, that you'll have the insight, foresight, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, physical strength, you know, mental clarity, whatever you need to make it through the day, and instead of, uh, you know, going, oh, I, I, I got this to do today, I got that, I got this looming over me, and I got the pressure of yesterday and the rest of the week, so you get this big storm in your head, and that's built up, so now as you got to stress, instead of the peace of God, you know, knowing and trusting Him that He is faithful, and all you got to do is have the faith to pray to Him, and ask Him to, for His help for you for the day, and and things will go a lot better. I mean, because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. God comes to give life and life more abundantly. And then uh, I always, in the morning, you know, read a scripture. No particular. I either go to Psalms or sometimes just flop the Bible open. And whatever's there, I just read it. And uh, even if it doesn't hit you between the eyes with some sort of rain and knowledge that like, yeah, that's just exactly right on the money for the time. It's still spiritual food. Witnessing, ministering to your spirit. And... It's just all around good, no matter what, even if it doesn't seem to make sense at the time. It's just it's just good. He's the first thing we need in the morning, the last thing we need at night. Yeah. And you just got to discipline yourself to get in a habit, even if you don't really realize it now. But just the more you do it, the more it's an easy habit to, to get into. I mean, sure, we're all going to forget sometimes, but keep doing it, because all it can do is benefit you. The Word is life. It's food to our spirits. You don't eat physically, you're going to starve to death, so when we don't eat spiritually, we're starving spiritually. Paul says, the spirit man, why do I do the things, it's a tug of war between the flesh and the spirit, the flesh man wants to do this, the spirit man wants to do this, just like the cartoon, you know, I think it was Bugs Bunny or something, but, you know, somebody had the <laughs> one little devil duck on, is it, I guess it was Donald Duck, Yeah. he had the devil duck on one shoulder and the angel duck on the other, and you know, that's, that's kind of true, because... Paul says, why do I do the things I know I'm not supposed to and don't do the things I know I'm supposed to do? Because he's trying to tell us there's a constant battle between the flesh man and the spirit man. Right. The spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. Right. And uh, 
all the more reason, you know, we should try to always pray and, you know, read some scripture because, you know, in these day and age, okay, yeah, okay, I got a, I got a phone I can just type in or I got a CD, I can have all this scripture. Okay, those are good too. Like, uh, next one we listen to is Come Away My Beloved and it's all these really good scriptures they just read over and over. Yeah, that's a CD that we got called yeah. Come Away My Beloved. Come Away My Beloved. And one guy's He's got the British accent, and then and then the girl, <laughs> she's got the British accent, and they tell us, you know, certain scriptures. and. Yeah, we love our faithful. British brothers and sisters, and we love their language, how they speak. It's beautiful and very relaxing, actually. So there you go. Yeah, there you go. But anyways, uh, it's just a good habit to open your Bible and read a scripture or two, and it helps you to be more built up and more instant in season and out of season when need be. It's just easy to get bogged down, and then, you know, just like say all them storms in your own head, when you can be built up in the Word of God, and then just have the peace of God, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yeah. If you don't have the joy of the Lord, then, you know, you're getting yourself beat down, and then you feel like, oh, well, you know, I just keep doing the same thing over and over, I get caught up in the conversation with these guys, and, you know, and... And everybody does, I mean... The, just the wrong kind of conversation because, like you said, yeah, those just, are one of those things that bog you down, just spiritually, just weigh on you. Yeah, it's just not edifying, idle talk that eventually does. It just, you just feel like you got lead in your shoes. Excuse me, <laughs> I got pizza in my tummy. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, yeah. God is good and, and, the, and the Word is life and... And it's just good to, sometimes like in the morning, I don't even have an appetite at uh, 4.35 o'clock in the morning to even eat breakfast. But I know i got to eat something because if I don't, by the time I get to work, and then I'm into whatever I'm doing for an, about an hour into it, and then I'm like, and I'm physically drained because <laughs> I didn't eat nothing. And I'm one of those people, by the way, that probably burn more calories in their sleep than most people do working all day. So if I don't eat, I'm a wet noodle. Totally. How much energy we have right now. Your energy is like ten times my energy. They're uh, going to hear you talking, and they're going to wonder why. What happened Where? to our hostess? <laughs> no, they're going to wonder why I've been doing this by myself all this time. Oh, this is just, just one in a million shots. She just happened to get... We had cappuccino today. Oh, my God. Too much cappuccino. <laughs> really sweet. That was 10 hours ago. Strong about. coffee. Well, yeah. You know, but I don't know. Just happened to be able to ramble on right now. <laughs> okay. Well, we had tea tonight, too. Oh, we had tea. Yeah, like two glasses. Yeah, yeah, I had, had two tea. glasses. Yeah, two glasses. Uh oh. <laughs> But, yeah, okay, so you mentioned the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes, and we do have the joy of the Lord, and we love each other very much. We've gone through good times, bad times, and beautiful times. Three of those beautiful times are three beautiful times. Oh, our, our, our children, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> Yeah, they're a, they're a blessing. Um, we dedicated them to the Lord when they was born. And uh, we had a really good conversation with our youngest son just tonight before we left his house. And that was a blessing. Just to be able, yeah. fortunate to be able to listen to, you know, your son that's teaching the ways of the Lord and he will not depart from it. When he's old. When he's old. And, um, and he hasn't. And he just had some good good word to say and ministering to each other and ministering about God. He's faithful. You know, we got to act on faith and just know that, you know, God knows. God knows and he's going to help because we cried out to the Lord and, and then we're stepping out in faith knowing, trusting God is going to get us through or out of that thing. And you'll get breakthrough, guaranteed. Yeah. And that's another thing he was saying, how we do need each other to lift each other up and help each other. And, you know, for those who maybe don't have other Christians around them or aren't going to a church, you got to, it's good to have friends and fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord to help you and encourage you.
because the world, they just pull you down. But when you cry out to God, God will send people your way, and uh, God himself will be your brother, your sister, your mother, your husband, your father, whatever you need. We always have him, of course. But we're just fortunate and blessed to have our, our children that love the Lord. and We fellowship with them. And we fellowship with them. Yeah. And, and we have prayed every morning and every night. Yeah, we pray every morning. From the time they were... Before yeah. they were born. Yeah, and we always pray for them and always pray for each one of them individually and their families and pray their protection and help them through the day, bless them, Lord, whatever they need. And um, I think that we're reaping the reward of being faithful to do that. Yeah, I mean, prayer, the prayer of a righteous man has much avail. And Sometimes we don't feel righteous, but we're righteous through the blood of Christ. That's right. And we just got to have faith that, you know, and then say you blow it, blow it somewhere, or you feel maybe a little, um, not condemnation, but conviction in your spirit about, well, I really got to change my conversation, or I'm not going to let the worldly people work, you know, like pull me down. Just sometimes it's best just to, if, instead of getting caught up, don't go to lunch with them, don't talk the perverted talk, or hey, look at that chick, wow, look at that one, or all that stupid talk like that, you know, just, just just examples. I mean, they're out there, they're real, you know, we don't have to pretend they're not. And then um, to maybe don't say nothing, you know. I mean, like uh, Dina said earlier, you know, throw your tongue on the altar, you know, I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's what's taking to hell, cuz get rid of it. Now, she's yeah. not talking literally, <laughs> but um, then again, you know, Cut yourself off from those people that... Are that, pulling you down. Yeah, if they're not holding you up and lifting you up, they're pulling you down. And yeah, you got to work with them. They're at your job. But you can bring them up to your level. If they don't like it, then, then you don't have to bow down to their level just to have, you know, to uh, please man. You know, you don't have to bow down to their level just to go along to be in whatever clique that is just a dead... Dead. It's nothing. It's... There's no life in it. You know, if they're out, you know, smoking weed and talking junk out of their mouth and just being totally unsaved, well, tell them, well, you, know, says, let, you know, let them, let them come up to your level, you know, and they, they don't believe in God, just say, well, I, I tell you what, ask God if he's real, and I guarantee you a thousand percent that he'll let you know that if he's real or not. Most of them don't want to do that because they're afraid that they might find out that he is real. <laughs> But either way, it pretty much shuts them up, and they'll leave you alone after that. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're watching us. Yeah, they watch. You know, uh, actions are louder than words, and, and yeah, they, they're watching. And um, and then if they don't, they don't want to know, they won't bring nothing up again. But, but those who are searching will bring it up. And either way, you plant a seed, and uh, somebody else might water that seed down the road. And then they start realizing, well, there might be a revelation, there might be some reality to what this, what he said, and just whatever it may be, or just something to say, wow, you know, yeah, I, I can see what they were saying, I can be free from that. Look at all these people that are, it is a bondage, it is a crutch. You know, what am I looking for in this atmosphere, and hanging out down here on the corner bar with the beer and the, you know, and the whatever that goes along with it, and, and it's just... There's got to be more to life, and just eventually people... They start seeing your light. Yeah, there's a light. And your love, because we're not. it's not easy to get along with each other, but then when the opportunities we get to show them the love of God is when there's, there's like strife or a disagreement or a meltdown, and then they get to see your fruits. Because we don't get to see what's inside of each other until we go through pressure. And it's just like a sponge. I mean, whatever that sponge is full of... It's what's going to come out when you squeeze it. Exactly. So we're supposed to be full of the Holy Spirit, which is... And the evidence of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, peace patience, patience, kindness, kindness gentleness, gentleness, meekness, meekness long-suffering, long and self-control. Suffering and self-control. Amen. And a, a, a soft voice turns away wrath. And, uh, you know, one guy's yelling across the room, barking and yelling. 
Well, you yell and bark back. Well, now it's just two idiots sitting there. <laughs> you know, instead of uh, one puts water on the fire, and the other puts fuel on the fire. That's right. And then there's wisdom. There's wisdom. Um, and then the Holy Spirit started to guide you through something. And, and then next thing you know, it's like, wow, I just, I just got out of all that mess and everything's fine. I don't know how I got out of it, but it, you just go through it and you come out the other side. Yeah. yeah, sometimes going to work every day is like going to war every day. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, you know that. You have a whole story on that <laughs> well, job you, you had too. on the coast. <laughs> yeah. Praise God anyway. Okay. <laughs> well. We just ran out of gas. Yeah, we just ran out of gas. <laughs> uh, we're finally going blank in the old Bill Mine here. <laughs> the 54-year-old. Well, we're 55 now, aren't we? 56. <laughs> no, who's 56? Me. Oh, because I'm still 55. Yeah. Okay. But we just went 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. I know, it's going fast, it's running up there. We're going to turn off the car, we're home. Well, let's end this, let's say, let's see. Well, God bless you, and we're going to do this again. And okay. um, signing out, this is Dina. Uh, this is David, Dina's husband. Um, be blessed and know that God is good, and he's faithful, and he's there. Who cries out in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. God bless.